Hello everyone. Today I would like to show you my method of cleaning metallic bound diamond and CBN stones. There are several methods out there to do that, to clean them and to dress them. I would like to show you my method, which involves electrolysis. I didn't find anything online so far with a quick Google search. Maybe this is an old hat and people know about it. If not, um, I'm glad to share it with you. So, first as a disclaimer, this process involves electricity. Um, be careful always when working with electricity. I cannot be held responsible for any damages to you or your goods. And if you try this, it's all on your own risk. So with that um, legal disclaimer out of the way, let's get started. Now, this will only work with metallic bound stones. It will not work with resin bound stones, simply because you're using electricity and the resin is non-electrically conductive. So you can only do this with metallic bound CBN or diamond stones, such as these. These are CBN. And if you use these, you have probably noticed that they clog up and get less aggressive. This one is non-treated. On this one I have already started. You can see there's a notable difference. This one is almost done. And now I will show you how to do this. What do you need? First, a pair of gloves. You can already see some copper here. These are copper bond coming off. You need acetone, kitchen paper, a DC power supply which can deliver at least one amperage and 30 volts. You need a glass jar or a box or plastic box, at least something that's non-metal, non-conductive. Tap water, and the tap water needs to be mixed with baking soda. Um, this is just normal baking soda. You can use other stuff, but baking soda is non-toxic and available. You need, of course, the stone. I have already one in here. And you need a piece of metal. Here is a piece of uh, titanium I had left from a failed folder build. So basically this is reverse electrolysis. Um, I don't want to get into the details of how electrolysis works, but the method or the idea I had, and again I'm pretty sure other people are doing it, the idea I had was, well these stones are metallic bound and uh, CBN and diamond are non-conductive but metal is. So what if I just reverse electrolysis? And what happens basically is, and uh, any chemists watching this forgive my crude language, it's not my mother language, English, basically the copper ions are ripped out of the stone and travel away from it while the non-conductive CBN or diamond remains in place and the more you rip out of the binding, of the copper binding or copper resin, the more these uh, abrasive particles are sticking out and make the stone aggressive again. The same for any steel swarf that's built up in there, it will be removed very fast. And now, basically this is reverse electrolysis, as I have mentioned. As I have mentioned, the black usually is the negative uh, clamp, it's the cathode. You put that on the stone you want to clean and the positive, usually red one, anode you put on I run the metal piece and then you put both these pieces inside your uh, container with the baking soda water in it, make sure they don't touch each other. And all you have to do at this point is hit start, I use 30 amps, uh, 30 volts and 1 amp and you can see some bubbles forming immediately on both uh, parts and what's happening is copper ions are traveling to your anode and you are have you are having your stones self-dressing basically. Now this will work as I just described very well if you use just water uh, or a water-based lubricant on your sharpening stones to sharpen. But as you probably know if you use metal uh, bound or, or metallic bound diamond and CBN stones oil works much better. However, oil is an electrical insulator, so if you want to dress a stone with that method, method that uses oil, such as this one, what you need to do first is to get as much of the oil out uh, from the stone, off of the stone from the surface as possible. And the way I like to do that is with some kitchen paper, 
kitchen towel and some acetone. Also I would like to point out acetone is highly flammable. Um, keep the bottle at a certain distance from this here because that could always in theory happen a spark. And yeah, you don't want to get that acetone burst up in flames. Now I have already pre-cleaned this a little bit. There's not a lot coming off anymore, but um, yeah, a little bit. Brush, scrub off as much oil as you can. And then this reaction will go very well. If it doesn't, if it doesn't work for you for some reason, if you use oil, most likely, at least that's what I found, it's still being too much oil on there and it's not working very well anymore. It, it won't work very well with oil or not work at all because again, oil is an electrical insulator. So once you've cleaned it, put it in there and start the reaction. Now, as you can see, the bubbles are mainly forming around the clamp. And this is due to the fact that this stone still contains oil, so it's not entirely electrically conductive. And also because the, uh, the current cannot really travel that far inside of uh, these stones. You can see the bubbles coming off all of here, the, uh, the titanium part, but only here. So what I recommend after maybe 60 seconds is you switch it off. First switch it off before you touch anything. Then move the clamp a little bit. Again, make sure whoops, they don't touch each other and then switch it on again and yeah that's interesting so you can see more bubbles coming off um, I found that the longer you have the reaction going the more bubbles come off because at some point the oil also gets like flushed out the whole process takes anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes in my experience it really depends on how much your stones are clogged and also how fine these are the finer the longer it takes I think this one two one 2 slash 1 micron will take maybe even 20 minutes but again these are just my experiences and if anybody else has experience with this process to dress and clean stones I would be very interested to hear your opinions now uh, I mentioned I think I mentioned in the beginning of this video that you can use acid for cleaning these and you could in theory also use acid as a replacement for baking soda anodization works actually even better in concentrated sulfuric acid which I have which I have tried but concentrated or and even diluted sulfuric acid is really dangerous um, so also it involves you having to take off the metal plates from your stones so I don't really recommend it um, again if you do it anyways be very careful and all responsibility is in your hands I cannot be held responsible for everything here as well as I said previously but it works very well and exactly because it doesn't involve any acids uh, non-toxic substances I really like this method it's fast you don't have to be involved just stay close to it one thing I would like to mention um, I don't really see it happening here really but this method can also be used for uh, removing rust and when you do it with rust, rust is iron based, um, there can uh, some hydrogen, uh, hydrogen gas form. Hydrogen is non-toxic but very flammable as a gas. Uh, I don't see enough of this, if any, uh, being cr uh, created here, but just to be sure, do it in a well-ventilated area and be in the proximity. Yeah, that's basically it. So, switch it off and Take this stone out and to see whether it was successful or not, uh, the coarser stones you can, oops, you can usually feel with your hands. These finer ones I just take a cheap blade and just quickly rub it against it and see if, it's sharp, uh, if the stone is sharp and creating a nice burr or not. But you will learn to get a feel for it. Again, let me know what you think, if you do it maybe, what your experiences are, or if you haven't tried it so far and try it. I would really like to hear your comments, how it went for you. Thanks very much for watching and yeah, keep your knives sharp. Goodbye.